Hi, this is the last lesson in the course Data Mining with Weka, lesson 5.4 summary. So we'll just uh, have a just a quick summary of uh, what we learned here. Uh, one of the main points I've been trying to convey is that there's no magic in data mining. There's a huge array of alternative techniques, and they're all fairly straightforward algorithms. We've seen the principles of many of them. Perhaps we don't understand the details, but we've got the basic idea of the main methods of uh, machine learning used in data mining. And there is no single universal best method. Data mining is an experimental science. You need to find out what works best on your problem. Weka makes it easy for you. Using Weka, you can try out different methods. You can try out different filters, different learning methods. You can play around with different data sets. It's very easy to do experiments on Weka. Perhaps you might say it's too easy because it's important to understand what you're doing, not just blindly click around and uh, look at the results. And that's what uh, I've tried to emphasize in this course, understanding what you're doing and evaluating what you're doing. There are many pitfalls that you can fall into if you don't really understand what's going on behind the scenes. It's not a matter of just blindly applying the tools in the workbench. And uh, we've stressed in the course uh, the focus on evaluation, evaluating what you're doing, and the significance of the results of the evaluation. Different algorithms differ in performance, as we've seen. But you know, in many problems, it's not a big deal. It's the differences between the algorithms are really not very important in many situations. And you should perhaps be spending more time on looking at the features and how the, how the problem is described and the kind of operational context that you're working in, rather than stressing about just getting the absolute best algorithm. It might not make all that much difference in practice. Use your time wisely. Now, there's a lot of stuff that we've missed out. I'm really sorry I haven't been able to cover more of this stuff. There's a whole uh, technology of filtered classifiers where you want to filter the training data, but not the test data. That's especially true when you've got a supervised filter where the uh, results of the filter uh, depend on the class values of the training instances. You want to filter the training data, but not the test data, or maybe f take a filter designed for the training data and apply the same filter for, to the test data without re-optimizing it for the test data, which would be cheating. And uh, you often want to do this during cross-validation, and the trouble in Weka is that you can't get a hold of those cross-validation folds. It's all done internally. So filtered classifiers are a simple way of dealing with this problem. We haven't talked about costs of different decisions and different kinds of errors, but in real life, different errors have got different costs. And uh, we've talked about uh, optimizing the error rate or the uh, classification accuracy, but really in most situations we should be talking about costs, not raw accuracy figures. And these are kind of different things. There's a whole panel on uh, the Weka Explorer for attribute selection, which helps you select a subset of attributes to use when learning. And in many situations, it's really valuable to, uh, before you do any learning, to select an appropriate small subset of attributes to use. Uh, there are a lot of clustering techniques in Weka. Clustering is where you want to learn something even when there's no class value. You want to kind of cluster the instances according to their attribute values. And association rules, that's another kind of learning technique where we're looking for associations between attributes. There's no particular class, but we're looking for any strong associations between any of the attributes. Again, that's another panel in the Explorer. Text classification, there's some fantastic uh, text filters uh, in Weka, which allow you to handle textual data as words or as characters, n-gram sequences of three, four, or five consecutive characters. And you can do text mining using Weka. And then finally, we've focused uh, exclusively on the Weka Explorer, but uh, the Weka Experimenter is also worth getting to know. You know, we've done uh, a fair amount of rather boring, tedious calculations of means and standard deviations uh, manually by changing the random number seed and keep running things again. That's very tedious to do that by hand. The experimenter makes it very easy to do this automatically. So there's a lot more to learn. And 
I'm kind of wondering if uh, you'd be interested in an advanced data mining with Weka Core. So I'm toying with the idea of putting one on. And I'd like you to let us know what you think about that idea and what you'd like to see included. So let me just finish off here with a kind of a final thought. You know, we've been talking about data, data mining. Data is recorded facts, a change of state in the world, perhaps. And that's the input to our data mining process. And the output is information, the patterns, the expectations that underlie that data, patterns that can be used for prediction and uh, of uh, useful applications in the real world. So we've been going from data really to information. Moving up in the world of people, not computers, knowledge is kind of the accumulation of your entire set of expectations, all the information that you have and how it works together. A large store of expectations and uh, different situations where they apply. And then finally, I'd like to define wisdom as the value attached to knowledge. But I'd like to encourage you to be wise when using data mining technology. You've learned a lot in this course. You've got a lot of power now that uh, you can use to analyze your own data sets. Use it wisely. Use this technology wisely for the good of the world. And that's my final thought for you. Now there is an activity associated with this lesson, uh, a little revision activity. Go and do that and uh, then uh, do the assessment, the final assessment and we will send you your certificate, if you do well enough. Good luck, and uh, it's been good talking to you, and maybe we'll see you in an advanced version of this course. Bye for now.